Hello and welcome to the AI Cloud Collision course. We'll be joined today by AI expert Daniel Hume, who is going to discuss how AI is going to impact business and some of the things you need to consider as SAP customers. Um, my name is Joe Campbell. I'm a sales director from EF for Lemongrass and I've been in the SAP ecosystem for 30 years. Thanks, John. I'm uh, Daniel Hume. Uh, I wear two hats for the past 25 years. I've been researching AI. Uh, my undergraduate PhD postdoc role in AI. I'm currently an entrepreneur in, in residence for UCL, so I help them spin out um, AI um, uh, tech companies. Um, I started a company 15 years ago that's been building AI solutions for some of the biggest uh, companies in the world. And um, we were acquired by WPP um, two years ago, where I take on the chief AI officer role. I spent a huge amount of my time um, educating boards, uh, organizations about how to um, uh, embrace uh, and utilize AI. Thanks, Daniel. Very, very interesting. So a couple of questions for us to have a discussion on. First one, um, so AI is being touted, rightly so, as the next industrial revolution. Do you see a clear roadmap for SAP related AI? It's, a, it's, it's really tricky. I mean, over the past um, year, um, generative AI has obviously um, uh, uh, transform the landscape. These technologies have been around for many, many years and SAP and, and another type of ERPs have been embracing them over the past several decades to, um, to make better predictions, to be able to make better decisions. What generative AI allows you to do is, is essentially re-architect how data is stored and how knowledge is accessed. Um, and, and, and I think that that does potentially disrupt um, how ERP, ERPs like SAP will operate. I do think, though, over the next five, 10 years, not much will change. Business cycles, economic cycles, you know how, how it is, Joe, getting budget to actually implement this stuff, implementing it in production, it's hard and it takes time. So, so I, I think that these technologies do challenge the SAP type, type model, but I don't think we'll see it massively challenged um, for, for the next three or four years. Okay, thank you. Okay, so given that we sensibly have no clear idea where AI will take us, do you think it's important for companies to create an infrastructure for SAP that is AI ready? Um, have you got any ideas on how they were, would prepare for this? Well, I mean, this is your your day job as well, Joe. But um, what what I advocate is is that you know there is a there are there are several actually data layers that I think are really important to enable AI. There's there's the data layer that that is um, that is your is your tr traditional kind of connected ERPs and your interfaces into them. The knowledge graphs are, are also an incredibly powerful um, way of representing data to allow you to make inferences, to allow you to find insights, um, and and that that is enabled by by moving your data to a cloud and, and connecting it together. And, th and then, as I said, there's this new type of kind of data store, these large language models that allow you to query your data in new and, and in interesting ways. And I, and I, and I think that um, the organizations need to have now have a kind of a multi-layer strategy from, from a, a data perspective uh, and, and, um, and, and build the appropriate or engage with the appropriate AI technologies to, to solve the problems. I think we get excited about technology and, uh, and we, we gravitate to new shiny things without thinking about what is the problem that needs to get solved and what's the right infrastructure <clears throat> to be able to then answer that and answer that problem. I mean, the, the fact though is, is that if organizations don't go on this journey, they don't um, enable themselves to become adaptable, then they're going to really struggle. Okay, so bearing that in mind and that it's all about um, technology enabled transformation with business value and that the IT teams that are currently involved in SAP and architecture have no idea where I, AI will take us. Um, and your business owners and the, like, you know, the budget owners here in the operations don't know where it's going. How do you think the company should structure themselves internally to get ready for this tsunami of, of change is going to come in the next three to five years. Uh, as I said, I think this is this is your day job as well as mine. I'd love to hear your your thoughts on this. I think I think there are multiple um, things that organisations should be doing. Um, I'm, I'm a big advocate actually of of, of agile type methodologies. So um, um, I, I, Scrum and, and and whatnot that they allow you to get an understanding of your resource, the skills, the hopes, dreams, desires of your employees. They also force you to 
be more rigorous about what work needs to get done. And then in theory, you can use AI to much more effectively allocate that resource to that demand. So I think that, that that's an, a really important journey that organizations need to, to, to go on. They, they're, they're, we also need to understand that the, the digital transformation is a process to get to a digital twin. And, uh, and, and it, digital twins are, are a challenge because there's no one obvious owner of a digital twin. Is it the supply chain director? Is it the CMO? Is it the CEO? Somebody needs to be looking horizontally across the organization and thinking about the impact that these technologies have, not just on their business unit, but across, um, across the whole supply chain. And, and, and then from a very pragmatic approach, I think that you can create a collective backlog of frictions that exist across that supply chain and start to use the appropriate technologies to address those frictions, whether it be machine learning models or decision-making models. And then over time, build your data architecture, build your data lake um, um, and uh, to, to, to build that, that, that digital twin uh, over time. You don't have to build a digital twin to, to then get to get all the value uh, from it. You can start to build your digital twin now uh, and, and get value as you're, as you're building it out. Mm, okay, sounds very similar to what happened with uh, e-com when it first came out, Daniel. When the e-com director and then the, kind of disappeared, it became business as usual. But by yeah. looking at that, um, like if you envisage a time when supply chain is being optimized with AI, um, customer interactions are optimized with AI, and all, all the market insight is optimized with AI, these are core areas for SEP. Um, so would you see that it's going to come a time where, where SAP will become the system of record and become transactional? A lot of these things will be done outside of SAP, like using data lake technology, or, or, or where would you predict that, that the, the impact is going to be on the SAP world and SAP itself? It, 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 it is difficult to predict. Um, I, I think that the, the SAP type model is going to be challenged by, um, by uh, the the large language models, by by these new new paradigms, and, and it might be that you know SAP are a big smart organization that they might also be embracing these technologies and augmenting their stack, allowing it to be um, an open architecture, interoperable, so you get the benefits of of both types of systems. But but ultimately, organizations are, are wanting to to, to op completely optimize themselves, uh, and, and if SAP doesn't allow them to do that holistically, then organizations are going to look for alternative solutions. Um, and and uh, uh, yes, so 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 th that's where organizations are going. SAP can be part of that, that conversation. It might get um, elbowed out or it can um, or it can actually thrive and, and try to um, um, essentially um, grow its business into into those new opportunities. So it sounds like there could be opportunities of um, SAP have an AI involved in everything it does, but a lot of the big heavy lifting might be done outside of SEP, but it remains to be seen where whether they'll keep up with the, the level of innovation. So finally, um, will AI kill SEP or should we not worry about the roadmap and let AI figure it out? I think, I think, first of all, uh, deferring to AI is, is a popular solution nowadays. Um, I think that, um, I think that the next 10 years is um, is going to be very interesting. I think organizations are going to realize that they need to embrace these technologies in one way or the other. They need to enable themselves on the cloud. They need to be able to get access to the insights, deploy those insights, make better decisions So uh, for, the, for them to, to thrive. So what we're gonna see that that all happen over the next 10 years. Beyond that, it's very hard to predict. I think that the, these technologies are gonna disrupt humanity, society in, in, in many, many ways. Um, and, and so I, I tend not to pre predict the next 10 years. I think that SAP model will be challenged. Um, I think there's not where there's a challenge, there's an opportunity. Um, but but ultimately, if organization there isn't there isn't an alternative for organizations to become more of more efficient they have to become more efficient they have to become more effective they have to unlock the creative capacity of their workforce to ena enable them to innovate so having a platform and methodologies organizational structures like agile and scrum coupled together to allow them to adapt more quickly to a changing world is where organizations are ultimately going to survive and thrive okay great so um, thanks very much, Daniel, for today. Um, that was uh, really interesting. Um, so I think in summary, we're saying, 
you can't sit back and uh, just wait for this to happen. Like organizations need to be proactively looking at where you're uh, summarizing, like where they've got friction and start to look at in an agile manner how they can kind of build a backlog and look at which technologies as they come into the market can help them to take them forward. And that'll be used in a combination of SAP, cloud technologies have been on the cloud to give that uh, agility and also building up your data lake with structured data to enable you to be ready to, to adopt uh, these things. Is that a fair summary or? You, 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 said, you said it better than me, Joe, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, well look, Thanks very much for everybody who's um, who's watching this, um, for uh, coming along and seeing our uh, our little vlog today. And um, if you get any questions, feel free to to reach out to us, and we're happy to engage you. So thanks a lot, and thanks again, Daniel. Okay, thanks, goodbye, sure. everybody. Bye, Daniel. Bye.